gonna save you some time. If you're looking for the best small to mid-size sort of crossover SUV, the Mazda CX-5 is still it. The CX-5 has been the gold standard in this category since it debuted in 2017, with better style and handling than the CR-V and the RAV4, as well as a sort of more luxuriously appointed interior. Is that still the case? Well, with all new versions of the CR-V and the RAV4 coming probably within the year, as well as an all new version of the Kia Sportage that just debuted, Mazda's commanding lead has shrunk to more of a photo finish. Let me tell you why. What's going on everyone, Jax here, and today I'm with the 2022 Mazda CX-5 in Signature Trim. One thing Mazda has done right over the past few years, it's styling and design. And even five years in, this Mazda CX-5 still looks good, especially with just a few subtle styling tweaks in this signature trim. It's, it's kind of like Brad Pitt, like he still looks amazing, but if he got a little Botox, I bet he would look even better. I hope you were the groom. Mazda's design language just crushes, and furthermore, it seems pretty adaptable to change. Check out a few of these little design enhancements. See, the grille on this CX-5 signature trim has been massaged a little bit, and the headlights have been updated as well to give it a sort of more modern face. And I think updating the kind of eyes of the Mazda CX-5 really helps to update the design. And in the rear, these taillights have been tightened up a bit with a little bit more of a crisper outline as well as kind of rings around the brake lights. It's all just a little bit more of a premium design and that's what helps to kind of elevate the design of the CX-5 over something like a RAV4. See? The black plastic cladding is also gone on this top shelf model, and it's replaced by body colored trim all around, kind of like what you would find on like an Audi SUV. And thanks to the Mazda's pretty good exterior proportions, it more or less works. It's able to pull off the sort of monochromatic look pretty well, although it does look a bit tacked on mainly because it is. They even managed to squeeze a few extra horses out of the turbo four-cylinder when using premium gas. So when you fill this with premium, the 2.5 liter turbo four makes 256 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque, which is generally excellent for this class of vehicle. Is it still running through a um, ancient six-speed automatic? Well, yes. But the healthy torque number makes the need to shift, you know, less necessary. So it's fine. And hey, since the driving experience is one of the things that makes this particular SUV so compelling, let's talk about that for a bit. So behind the wheel of the Mazda CX-5, and if you're wondering about why this vehicle is so highly regarded. I mean, this is pretty much the reason why. All you need to do is go take a test drive of any Mazda and compare it to sort of the other, uh, you know, vehicles in their classes to see the sort of Mazda difference. And we're gonna talk about that for just a second so that you can hopefully decide whether or not that is a high enough priority on your sort of list of things that you care about in a vehicle to consider a Mazda in light of some of its shortcomings or in some of its future shortcomings. Because as I've said, there are some new models, very competitive new models coming in this 
market segment. All right, so positives before we actually turn on the handling road. Um, the thing that stands out to me as an enthusiast dad who enjoys driving a car, especially a family car that's sort of geared towards me, is that the ride in Mazdas, considering that the suspension only has one state of tune, doesn't have like adaptive dampers or anything like that, the ride in Mazdas is near perfection, honestly. It is nearly perfect. It is insane how well the body motions are controlled. I'll show you guys in a second when we get on the handling road. But the ride is awesome. The uh, brake pedal feel is fantastic. There are very few family vehicles like this where the brake pedal feel is so nice and progressive, meaning you get the exact amount of braking versus the amount of pressure that you put on the pedal. Gas pedal, same thing. The throttle is calibrated. I don't know if you know this, but Mazda's throttle pedal is actually hinged on the floor instead of being suspended from underneath the dash. Um, and that typically results in a little bit more finesse in the throttle pedal experience. So driving a Mazda is unlike anything else. The steering, incredibly accurate. It does feel a little bit bandy. I don't love the feel of the steering of a lot of Mazdas, but the accuracy is unquestionable. So like the experience from behind the wheel of a Mazda is un paralleled, especially in sort of mainstream vehicles. There just isn't anything else that drives like a Mazda. And that's why the CX-5 has been a champion in this class and Mazda's top selling vehicle like ever. Now we're turning on to the handling road, which is notable for its horrible pavement undulations. Um, I didn't mention the power in this vehicle, 256 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque when you use premium fuel. So that's impressive. Now we're about to come up to this horrible spot of quick right hand bumps. They're on the right side of the car. And notice how my body, my head and everything is almost perfectly still because the car is absorbing everything in an athletic way. We go around this first turn. It is very well controlled for a family SUV. Um, and just overall, keep an eye on how my body is reacting to the motions of the car. You're probably not seeing much reaction. Like I'm staying relatively still while the car is sort of moving around me. That is the Mazda magic. That's what makes Mazdas different from their competitors. Now, with the big bump coming up, you're going to see how it takes a larger impact. Here is the big bump right here. And there's one motion, just one motion. I go down, I come back up again, and the car returns back to normal. It's just, it, there's nothing else that can compete with this in terms of like mainstream vehicles. You want a little bit of that 310 pound feet of torque? And it gets up and goes. I mean, it spools right up. The six-speed automatic kicks down. It is only six speeds, but I promise you, you, you won't really notice it. You won't really think twice about it. It is legitimately quick compared to its competition, which is way, way less powerful, especially in the torque category. 310 pound-feet. My Corvette is 350. Like that's crazy. I also think the Mazda seats are generally comfortable. I mean, they feel great. This is the $40,000 signature trim. So it's the, you know, Katura Brown, like special leather and they feel soft. They're really good. I almost wish they had a little bit more bolstering on the sides just to kind of speak to Mazda's sporty intention. Um, I was in the Lexus NX F Sport recently and those seats are literal perfection. Like the F Sport seats in Lexuses are fantastic. And that felt like a little bit more appropriate for what that particular trim of the NX was going for. Whereas this, this isn't like it's a premium-ish vehicle. It's trying to be a premium vehicle. But I feel like the seats are just generally good, you know, if that makes sense. Now, before I get into the negatives, from a driving perspective, I've got plenty of space. I'm six foot six. Now, I can't really sit behind myself in this vehicle. There are not many that I can. We have a Toyota RAV4, a stripped base model Toyota RAV4. That is what Ella drives and I can't hardly fit behind myself in that either. The Toyota RAV4 does have more space. It is more spacious than this, but this is fine from a driving perspective, so that's fine. I also like the infotainment controls in the Mazda. I've said it a million times. They have done the best sort of mainstream approximation of iDrive out of any vehicle. The screen is up there. It could be a little bit bigger. It's like 10 something inches. It's not bad. And the controls are right here. The menus are a little simplistic now, and this is getting into the negatives. The tech in here for a car that costs $40,000, the design, the feel, the smell, the looks, everything says 
$40,000 or up. It says premium vehicle, but the technology is lagging. The gauge cluster is still the same Mazda sort of simplicity, which is fine and I appreciate it, but I feel like your mainstream consumer, they, they want something a, a little bit more fancy. They want something a little bit more digital wow. You know, it's the, we're getting into the screen generations here. So I think the gauge cluster is a bit of a miss and the 10 inch display is fine but we're seeing 12, 13, 14 inch displays, crazy stuff. That Lexus NX I mentioned a second ago had a giant display in it. And so I think the consumer, especially if you wanna step up to that luxury premium level, wants something more than what the Mazda is giving you. Also, we drove this thing back and forth to Atlanta uh, for some volleyball trips and the cruise control, I expect in even mainstream cars that the adaptive cruise control is pretty infallible like it's going to track my lanes it's going to steer for me it's going to do all these things the cruise control in this is barely as good in, as it is in our rav4 and our rav4 is a 2017 model and it's a base and it just has the adaptive cruise with like it doesn't have the lane centering but it has like the lane we'll call it nudging right this doesn't even hardly have that it has decent like calibration in terms of the car in front of you but its closest follow mode is too far away. And I mean, we're talking like two or more car lengths away. So people are constantly cutting in front of you and then it has to slow way down. It offers you no steering assistance or lane centering and Mazda yada yada some stuff about, you know, the driving experience or something. That's bull crap. It needs to have it at $40,000. Also the blind spot monitoring is super conservative. Like the car can be easily a car length or more behind you. And when you change lanes it starts beeping and flashing in the mirror which can lead you to either kind of false alarms or turning it off because you're sick of it and you shouldn't do that you shouldn't want to turn off the blind spot monitoring it should help you the auto high beam function i haven't complained about auto high beams in a long time because i used to not like auto high beams i haven't complained because they've been generally good the ones in this hit or miss. And I don't think it is a car specific thing because when I had the CX-9 earlier, they were not as good as other offerings either. The wireless charger doesn't charge through my phone case, which is a thin case that literally every other vehicle that I test charges and it doesn't seem to want to pick up through my case. That was the same in the CX-9 as well. The chargers are in virtually the same spot and they're kind of canted away from you. So you can't see your phone while it's charging. So just little things like that. You want to be a premium luxury brand Mazda. You can't have these kinds of misses and then be like, but the driving experience, yes, the driving experience is unquestionably good, but the, and the materials in here, unquestionably good. And the design of this car, unquestionably good, but it wants to be a luxurious car. And that stuff has to also be unquestionably good. So let me sum up the driving portion like this, and then I'll kick you back to the interior and tech where we'll go into a little bit more detail. From behind the wheel, the Mazda drives very premium. It looks and feels very premium, but it doesn't necessarily spoil you in the same way a premium vehicle does. I'll compare it to something that I just tested and you can watch that video in the uh, link in the description below. The Lexus NX that I just had, the F-Sport model, was 55 grand, I think it was, so $15,000 more than this. And it is, no doubt, a premium vehicle. And it felt like it. I would say the materials in here are about as good. I like this sort of stitching they've got going on the dash. Plastics feel pretty good overall. But that Lexus had that giant screen. It had more connectivity. It had wireless CarPlay. It had a digital gauge cluster, although it's the old looking one, which is a stupid decision, Lexus. But it felt more premium. Mazda wants to move themselves into that level of the market. This is getting there, but that tech and infotainment stuff has got to be updated and it's got to be updated now. Now it can all be praises. This is best in class now by a narrow margin. So let's talk a little bit about why Mazda's lead has kind of eroded in the past couple of years. And a lot of the problem kind of starts on the inside. And it doesn't really have anything to do with the quality of the materials, but the sort of breadth of the technology. So 
one can fault the quality of the materials in the cabin. For a mainstream brand, Mazda does an excellent job of making you feel special. The Katura brown leather in this model is very soft and pleasing. The fake stitching looks good and convincing. And the fake and real bright work and sort of metal look trim also looks very convincing. It does a very good facsimile of a much higher end interior. And that's not a dig. That's not to say that the Mazda's interior materials aren't good, but it's just saying what it's doing at this sort of mainstream price point via $40,000 is punching well above its weight. But as I mentioned during the driving portion of this review, some of the technology is starting to fall behind, especially its competitors. Let me give you one particular example. The all new 2023 Kia Sportage has all of the Mazda's tech and safety features, gives you dual 12.3 inch screens, one for the gauge cluster and one for the infotainment, as well as video blind spot monitoring. And it gives you a blind spot monitoring system that doesn't beep you to death with false alarms. And it gives you an adaptive cruise control system that has lane keep assist, like lane centering. So it doesn't like require that much steering input because yada 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 some purity of driving bull And the Kia gives you nearly 40 cubic feet of cargo space while the Mazda only gives you 30 and that's a huge difference and one that a less sort of enthusiast minded family might prioritize over Mazda's excellent driving dynamics. Oh, and on top of all that, the new Kia Sportage, even when fully loaded like this signature trim is, costs less than the Mazda does. Like $4,000 less. So should you buy a 2022 Mazda CX-5 in signature trim? Well, yes, you still should. As of right now, as of recording this video, on whatever date it goes live, yes, this is still the best sort of small midsize SUV crossover that you can buy. But the clock is ticking. If you value the driver experience over everything else, then the Mazda CX-5 is still peerless. It remains the best looking option. It will fit most of your family's needs, and it still rides and handles better than something like the Honda CRV or Toyota RAV4. But time is running out. If the next CRV is as good in this segment as the Honda Civic is in its segment, and it's not as hideous as the HRV, which was just revealed, then it's going to be an absolute killer in this class of vehicles. If the upcoming RAV4 retains Toyota's plethora of power powertrain options, specifically the hybrid or plug-in hybrid models, and it still looks kind of more like a baby forerunner than a baby Highlander, then it too will be a threat to the CX-5's dominance. And as I mentioned before, the 2023 Kia Sportage already is a very compelling alternative to the CX-5. The question isn't whether or not Mazda can respond to these new challengers and to this level of competition. But the question is, can Mazda respond quickly enough to stay on top? This is an incredibly important model for the brand, and they need it to be a success. Guys, thanks so much for being here, and thanks for being a part of this channel. I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing if you found this video to be useful. If you're in the market for a small to mid-size SUV and you're considering a Mazda CX-5, I hope you got value out of this, and comment down below, like what other models are you shopping for? What other brands are you shopping for? I love Mazda, I really do, and I want to see them succeed. And I love the CX-5, this is an excellent sort of small mid-size SUV, but the competition has moved the needle and it's moving rapidly. And as a small company, I just don't know if Mazda can pivot quickly enough to stay relevant in the segment. I hope I'm wrong. I hope they do. I wish them success. If you like the video, please consider giving it a like. It really does help the channel and I will see you in the next video. All right, thanks, peace. Whatever's happening at soccer practice is not that good. It's not that good. Your kids are not good at sports. They're not good. You think they're good, but they're not good.
And the soccer people. Score goal, everybody cheer. I don't even think they're playing. I think they're just practicing and they're celebrating some kid's mediocrity. Yay, you don't stink, little Johnny. 